Welcome everybody to today's session of Phenomics webinars. Uh, today will be our last session for this year. We will continue next year. However, today um, our attention goes to uh, Professor Aruda from uh, the University of Campinas in uh, Brazil. Professor Aruda is a professor um, of the Department of Genetics at the Institute of Biology at the State University of Campinas. He is also a member of the Brazilian Academy of Science, the World Academy of Science, and also a member of the committee uh, for the National Order of the Scientific Merit. Is that correct? Yes. <laughs> uh, as well as uh, the Brazilian, um, um, the merit of the Brazilian Republic government and the techno technological merit award for the government of the state of Sao Paulo in Brazil. He's co yeah. of the Research Center in Genomics for Climate Change, GCCRC, and the Mixed Research Unit in Genomics Applied to Climate Change created by Ambrapa and Unicamp with support of the FAPESP, so the Foundation for Research Support of the State of Sao Paulo. Welcome, uh, Professor Aruda. It's a big honor for us to have you today here at the Phenomics webinars presented to you by uh, Emphasis, EPPN 2020, and the International Plant Phenotyping Network. Hello. Hello. Okay. Thank you very much, Philip, for the kind presentation. It's a pleasure uh, to give today uh, the, this talk on uh, using uh, phenomics to uh, understand the role of uh, microbes in uh, from sugarcane microbiome and uh, in uh, in uh, 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 drought stress response in plants. So thank you very much. And uh, I will share, I think that you need, I, I will share my presentation. All right. I let, think that you need to stop. Oh, no, no. Yes. You, can, you can simply interrupt my presentation. Let me, let me quickly introduce uh, the topic for today. You will okay. certainly do this uh, as well, but uh, to lead you in um, somehow, um, we will hear in today's uh, Phenomics webinars, Professor Aruda who will present uh, results um, from a study conducted in 2018, which he supervised and performed in collaboration with uh, Jaderson, Silviera Leite, Armani, Rafael Suarez, Correa de Sousa, Barbara Bort Biazzotti, um, Juliana Erika de Cavallo, Teixeira Yesitipete, yes. um, from the Center of Biology and Genetics Engineering at Unicamp in Campinas, the Genomics for Climate Change Research Center, the Department of Genetics and Evolution Institute of Biology at the Unicamp in Campinas and Embrapa on modulating drought stress response of maize by a synthetic bacterial community. His talk today is titled Unraveling the Physiological Behavior of the Plant Modulated by a Synthetic Microbial Community Using a Real-Type Phenotyping Platform. Professor Aruda, the stage is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, I, I need to, to, yes, I need to share my screen. Uh, it's okay for you. Are you seeing my presentation? It works very well. Okay, thank you. I will put this in. Uh, okay, good. So thank you very much again, Philip, and the organizer of this webinar series. Uh, and uh, the International Plant Phenotype Network. And uh, today uh, I will uh, give, a, give a, a, a snapshot of uh, the work that we are doing uh, on um, how uh, to understand uh, the role of the uh, microbes, communities, and plant growth, plant development, and uh, tolerance to 
uh, abiotic stress, such as drop in uh, <laughs> high temperature. So as uh, Philip told, now the name of my presentation is uh, I'm revealing the plant physiological behavior modulated by a synthetic microbial community using a real-time phenotype platform. Why we, 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 we say real-time phenotyping platform? There are many phenotyping platform uh, now available uh, at different uh, costs. Of course, uh, some are very expensive system and others a little uh, more accessible for many different uh, uh, research groups around the world. But one of the, the major problem uh, is uh, uh, the data points, when you collect the data, when the platform you know, uh, collected the data uh, along, for example, uh, an entire day from, 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 from early morning to uh, 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 late afternoon and because there are many different uh, uh, changes in environmental uh, such as uh, uh, light intensity, temperature and, and, and many other environmental uh, changes occurring in a single day. <clears throat> so that depending on the time that you collect the data, you can have a different uh, uh, let's say response, uh, and, and, and this is critical when you are comparing uh, kind of treatment, for example, li like uh, the ones that I will show you today, is uh, comparing plant that has been inoculated with the synthetic microbial community uh, with a non-inoculated plant. So, uh, and, and what uh, has been uh, done by our team uh, is, uh, uh, devising a, a, a platform so that we can collect data at, let's say, re, when you say real time, you can select, you can collect uh, 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 data uh, in, in a time frame of uh, seconds or, or minutes or hours, it depends on, 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 on the, on the uh, resources you have to uh, store, the, store the data because at the end of an experiment that takes sometimes uh, 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 several weeks or more, uh, is gonna be a huge amount of data to be processed. So, but why we developed this, uh, this platform? Uh, we developed this platform to understand uh, uh, the role of the uh, microbial communities in plant growth and development and response to abiotic stress. But let me introduce a little bit about what is, for, for those that are not familiar, uh, what is the, the, the microbiome? So um, all organisms, including ourselves, and animals, plants, and eukaryotic uh, uh, species in, in general, they are, uh, let's say, uh, colonized by a huge amount of microbes. We, we, we tend to, 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 uh, to uh, we tend to view the, the microbes that uh, colonize uh, uh, an organism as, uh, let's say, microbes that are not good, are not uh, uh, making beneficial uh, contribution to the to the organism. But this is not uh, true when we uh, when we analyze the, the whole um, uh, community that is uh, colonizing, uh, for example, a single plant. Here's why we. We, we, we devise it in order to understand uh, or to review the microbial communities colonizing a sugarcane plant. Sugarcane, because it's a, a bioenergy uh, crop that is uh, used at large, at large scale in Brazil. So we can access microbes by using um, microbiology uh, methods such as isolation of uh, uh, microbes from based on uh, different species uh, or different behaviors, uh, or we can access the microbial community by sequencing the DNA, uh, the microbial DNA that uh, we can isolate it from, from the plant tissues, from roots, the stalks and leaves. And so 
what we uh, uh, I will show you today is that it is possible to devise methods to sequence microbial uh, DNA and base it on deep sequence. You can't have an, uh, uh, information on, on the abundance or, or the colonization. And we can also, uh, from the same plan, we can uh, construct culture collection so that we can ask, for example, if uh, a bacteria that is uh, what we call a uh, good colonizer, uh, we have this bacteria in our collection. With this uh, information that uh, we can cross-referencing the sequencing uh, data with uh, the culture collection, we can select based on different aspects, not only uh, based on the uh, uh, phylogeny or, 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 or any other microbe information. We can select, for example, based on uh, uh, colonization uh, behavior. So, we, and with this, with this cross referencing, we can select microbes and uh, divide uh, and, de and, 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 and design a synthetic communities. What is synthetic community? Synthetic communities that is because it's it's a community made it by 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 by, by scientists. So we 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 select the, the, the microbes that is, are going to put together in, a, in this, and this is a jargon that's uh, now uh, very well uh, adapted in the area. And we call this syncons, and then we can test. So we did this uh, for uh, sugarcane in order to unlock the microbiome at plant organ and developmental uh, levels. So, uh, samples collecting from different parts of the plant, leaves, stalk, young shoots, roots, and uh, also samples uh, collected from, uh, from soil around, and, uh, and uh, uh, samples that uh, can, can uh, bring information on the uh, bacteria or, or microbes that are outside or on the surface of leaves, stalks, and roots, or bacteria that are inside, endophytic bacteria that are inside the, the, the plant. So, and we can collect this at different stage of, uh, of development so that we can have a lot of information on the persistence of the, 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 the microorganisms that are, uh, or the microbes that are um, colonizing the plant. So we did this and we sequenced and uh, we, we collect hundreds uh, of, uh, of samples and we did a large scale sequencing. And what's very interesting is that uh, what we found is that sugar can harbor a large diversity of microbial communities. For, uh, we identified over uh, 23,000 different uh, bacteria groups, uh, colonizing roots, uh, shoots and, uh, and leaves uh, at, uh, at uh, exophytic and endophytic, uh, samples and with this we can map you know, the microbes that uh, 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 is, is select uh, you know uh, for uh, to, to colonize leaves and roots and shoots and uh, and, uh, and this is very interesting uh, to give us uh, an idea on uh, on the distribution of the diversity the microbial diversity along the different plant tissues. And we did this also for fungi, and and it's a surprise that we were able to identify over ten thousand different uh, fung uh, fungi fungal groups that colonize uh, plants. And this has been published, uh, and uh, it's very uh, uh, it it was one of the uh, the the, the uh, contribution to to the plant microbiome, showing how you can. Uh, let's say map not only the diversity but uh, the abundancy uh, in different tissues, uh, the microbes that colonize the plant. But what was very interesting is, is that we, with uh, analyzing those, this data, we uh, we we got information on uh, uh, on the distribution of the uh, microbes along the different tissues and time. Uh, development stage of the plant. So a specific microbial taxon are enriched in different plant organs. So you see here the bars, 
bars represent uh, soil, rhizosphere, uh, endophytic roots or young shoots or stalks, bottom stalk, medium stalk, uh, upper stalk, and also leaves. And what is very interesting is that you, you can see, you can, you can find all, all the, the microbes that uh, colonize uh, roots, shoots, and leaves, you can find in soil. But the proportion of the different group is completely different. So this data showed that different tissues select or enrich different bacterial groups uh, to, uh, to different plant organs. And here you can see the different bacteria that has been um, uh, identified in the system. So, and this is the same for fungi. So you have the fungi, uh, all, all the fungi are, are, are present in soil, but the different plant tissues, roots, shoots, and leaves, they select you know, or enrich in different plant, uh, in different microbial uh, uh, groups, and this I, we we believe that this has something to do with the functionality of those groups to that particular plant tissue. But what was very interesting, uh, because we analyzed uh, the microbes along the plant development, so with four, six, eight, and ten months of development, and what we found is that. Plant organs have a core community or have core communities, what we call a core microbiome, represented by a small subset of high abundant microbe groups. So uh, in, in blue here, we, you, 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 we see that uh, in this uh, uh, white triangles, we can uh, see that uh, um, a small, uh, a small a subset of the huge uh, bacteria community or bi bacteria di diversity, only around 10% correspond to 9% of the bacterial uh, cells present in that particular tissue. That what, what, This means that the particular plant tissue, roots, shoots, and leaves, they they, they enrich uh, the abundance of the uh, different, uh, uh, of a subset of the, uh, the entire diversity. We call this core microbiome. So each tissue is, uh, uh, let's say, enriching different. So, and core microbiome here we define as the subset of uh, high abundant microbial groups that are, uh, let's say, stable along the plant development. So they colonize plants, they enrich uh, 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 the number of the, uh, the, the, the bacterial cells and those uh, bacterial cells um, uh, remains along plant development. This is what we define as core microbiome. And again, I, we think that this is, uh, has something to do with the uh, beneficial uh, effect of the microbes for the plant. So plants, uh, let's say, uh, selected the, 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 the microbes and let them enrich uh, because they are uh, making some uh, 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 work, some, some beneficial uh, effect for the plant. And this is the same for fungi. So there are some fungi that are enriched. And, and you can see here, that in this uh, um, white triangle that the different groups that are enriched, different groups belonging to the core my, microbiome um, uh, is, is also uh, selected for by the plant at different uh, levels, organ levels. So what is the message here? The message is soil is, uh, let's say harbor a huge diversity and plants select the bacterial and fungi groups that uh, colonize the different plant organs and remains in the plant organs during throughout the, 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 the plant development so that they can uh, perhaps uh, help plants to 
uh, to deal with uh, nutrient acquisition and a biotic stress response or even biotic stress response. So, but how can we target the core microbiome? So here we, we devise a very simple way of constructing uh, uh, culture collection that, that we call it uh, the community-based culture collection. What is the community-based culture collection? Uh, it's a, a little bit different uh, from the traditional uh, uh, microbiology methods for microbe isolation that takes long and hard, a very time uh, consuming for isolating different um, um, uh, pure uh, uh, colonies in, in a very well-defined cultural medium. Uh, to avoid this, all this work, uh, what we did is simple. Um, take a sample of, of root, shoots, or leaves, and plate in, um, in, in, a, in a complete culture medium, and then pick the, 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 the colonies, independent if the colony is a single or poor or is a is a, 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 or the colony uh, uh, comprise uh, one, two, three, four, ten different microbes, and with with this, uh, with this, uh, each each colony here, it's it's we define as as as, as a community. So this is the community basic culture collection, so that we can, after this uh, first plating, you can pick and and store the the the, the microbes then. Later, you can identify the microbes by sequencing, and then, if necessary, you can uh, isolate. Uh, if you, if you, so, this has been also uh, uh, published, and it's a, it's a, a, a method that is now being used by different uh, uh, groups in the area. And doing this, um, our culture uh, uh, community-based culture collection, we recover over. 65% of the bacterial groups of the core microbiome in roots, stalks, and leaves. And this also has been um, um, uh, published. And what is important here, the message here is that using this approach and doing the cross-referencing, we can ask, for example, are the bacteria that are robust colonizer that, that uh, uh, um, uh, is enhanced in terms of abundancy in different tissues, are there are, are the, the beneficial bacteria or not, independent of the species. And this is what was done. We selected the 10 high, most abundant uh, OTUs, or because uh, and, and this is the definition uh, by sequencing of the 16S of bacteria. We uh, selected the 10 most abundant bacteria uh, of the, uh, uh, the shoots, the endophytic shoots, and the 10 most abundant endophytic uh, bacteria uh, from the roots. With this, we put together all those um, um, colonies and we made, we construct this um, synthetic microbial community. And then this was tested using uh, different plants. And here is, is a, a, a panel uh, showing the impact of this synthetic community designed by abundance, not by species, but by abundance on maize. You see here that non-inoculated versus inoculated plant, non-inoculated in the left and inoculated in the right. And you see here that, uh, yes, uh, the, this uh, uh, synthetic community that was built, was designed by abundance, not by species, has a big, big impact on plant growth and plant biomass. You see here that over 60% or over uh, three times more uh, biomass was produced when the, the, the corn plants was inoculated with the, uh, the synthetic community isolated based on abundancy, not on, uh, uh, not on species names and, and phylogeny. So then we ask it, how can we 
get more information on the impact of this uh, sugarcane syncon in maize using a real-time phenotyping platform. And here uh, is, is, is the overview of the platform that was designed by, um, um, by Jader Armani. And Jader, at this stage, uh, Jader uh, moved from a molecular biologist to uh, uh, electronic engineering and computer scientist. And he designed, he designed a system to collect a number of, uh, of data from the plant. So it's a monitoring process with different uh, sensors and sensors that can be used to, uh, to, 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 to see, uh, to measure the weight of the, of the pots with the plant. And this gives information on uh, biomass accumulation and water use efficiency and so on and so. And sensor that uh, monitor the uh, moisture, the soil moisture, uh, sensors that monitor leaf temperature and, uh, and so on and so on. And this is all the data is, uh, um, is collected in um, or uh, um, uh, monitored by a micro a controller and uh, and then this goes uh, into uh, 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 to the computer and, and 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 at real time and then the data are stored so that we can visualize what what's going on with each plant uh, that has been uh, inoculated or non inoculated with the synthetic microbial community. We call this a medium scale platform setup so that we can monitor a plant and. And, and environment monitoring, um, uh, Hasbury and Arduino Mega, wireless data uh, uh, transmission, uh, Google Shard, graph plotting, and real-time data visualization. This is the platform that was built by uh, Jadio. This is the composition. Um, there are monitors for air temperature and relative humidity. And you see here in A and B, you see the photosynthetic active radiation and monitor and light uh, diffuser bulb uh, monitor. Uh, you see here uh, in C uh, uh, view of the environmental uh, sensors positioned at the top of the greenhouse. This is a greenhouse setup. And so that we can uh, get access to air temperature, relative humidity sensor protected by a solar radiation shield and light intensity sensor inside the light bulb, uh, diffuser bulb. Uh, and in, in, in D, you can see a, a, a leaf temperature sensor. This leaf temperature sensor, a small leaf temperature sensor, can be attached to the leaf, to the to the leaf, so that you can collect data on the leaf temperature along the, the, the experiment. And sensors for um, uh, capacitive uh, uh, soil moisture sensor. And here is a very interesting setup that was. Uh, built together a uh, small startup company from the Institute of Biology. And it is a soft set flow measurement. So that with this setup, we can measure the water, in reality, the water flow from soil to the plant along uh, the entire experiment. And this is uh, monitored. Uh, you can um, collect data uh, 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 every second or every minute. And here, Ajada designed the system to collect data every five minutes. And then you have the uh, weighing lysimeter uh, to measure pot weight so that you can uh, monitor the water used uh, by the plant along the, uh, the entire experiment. And this is the one, what we call this one-to-one -one plant phenotype. Of course, we, we, this uh, platform cannot be uh, used for every plant, but we can sample uh, a number of plants. In this experiment, 70 plants were monitored, and you can distribute this uh, uh, the monitored plants along the experiment so that you can have really uh, very well uh, experimental design so that you can have all the information. And this was done uh, for an entire experiment, and uh, also uh, Jader design a system to collect uh, imaging uh, along the entire experiment 
um, uh, of different corn hybrids from different uh, commercial hybrids from different uh, agrobiotech companies so that uh, you can uh, image uh, the behavior of the plants uh, submitted to drug stress. And this is a, a snapshot of, uh, of the experiment. You see here this uh, days after uh, uh, sowing, or it's called DAS, from 43 days uh, after sowing to 63 days. This is a, a 10 days window. You see here the temperature, the temperature in greenhouse, this environmental temperature, it, uh, it, uh, it, 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 it varies a lot depending on the, uh, on the weather. If it, it's, you have a, a, a more cloudy uh, weather or, or, or sunny, you can see that the, the temperature, the air temperature varies. And then with the imaging, you can, you can follow exactly what, what is the impact of this variation in the uh, air temperature in the uh, plant canopy, for example. And uh, you can uh, correlate it with this, with uh, uh, the uh, humidity, air humidity, and you can also use this data to transform to get uh, information on, uh, uh, on, on, the, on the entire photosynthetic uh, activity uh, along the experiments. And, uh, um, and, and, and correlate this uh, with the plant uh, behavior. What they, uh, and then of course, uh, in this experiment, uh, Jader and Rafael, they, and, 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 and uh, uh, Juliana, they collect a, a number of, uh, of data on yield and uh, uh, kernel weight. And so the, we, we call this uh, uh, yield. And then uh, you see here that uh, in, in blue and red are uh, different um, um, synthetic communities uh, that was used. And you see here uh, in uh, uh, non-inoculated plants in, in gray. And you see here that the yield, when you have draw stress, you see here draw stress, the, two, the three different hybrids, there's a huge impact on, uh, on yield, uh, on uh, enhanced drug tolerance in plants that was inoculated with the synthetic community. So what this means is that somehow when you inoculate with this synthetic community that was selected based on abundancy in a sugarcane plant can also have a huge impact beneficial impact in a corn plant in terms of yield, in terms of uh, plant biomass. So, but how can we explain this huge impact in terms of uh, 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 drop tolerance and, uh, and uh, uh, using this uh, real-time platform? So here uh, I will uh, show uh, a, a movie uh, that a snapshot uh, movie that was uh, built by by um, by Jader uh, were uh, three different commercial hybrids from these companies Monsanto, Syngenta, and Pioneer. And these three commercial hybrids were treated, were inoculated or non-inoculated with the synthetic community. In the left, you have the hybrid. Uh, the plants for this hybrid from Monsanto that was not inoculated in the right inoculated. And the, the next uh, two plants are from Syngenta, non-inoculated, inoculated, non-inoculated, inoculated, non inoculated, inoculated. So that you can follow plant behavior along a dry stress treatment. And those plants were kept at well water conditions and then left 15 days uh, where we, we cut irrigation so that it, it experienced a very, uh, uh, let's say, strong draw stress. And then uh, plants were uh, rewatered again so that you can see the behavior of the plants when you, you uh, put water again. And you see here, um, the, 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 this uh, uh, experiment was conducted uh, for uh, uh, two months. 
and picture as uh, was taken every five minutes. And you see here that plant when start to, to, to feel the, 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 the dry stress, you see here that plant, the leaves of the plants are um, start you know, to, to bend, start to, 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 to follow down. And you see here, please take, uh, pay attention to non-inoculated, inoculated, non-inoculated, inoculated, non-inoculated, non inoculated, non inoculated, inoculated. What happens is that after uh, some, uh, sorry, uh, I don't know. Uh, okay. So you see here that after, you know, prolonged draw stress, you see here, for example, these two plants from the Pioneer hybrid that was not inoculated, it start to bend. The inoculate uh, planted is still uh, up, stand up, okay? Let's see what happens. You see here, for this hybrid, the two non-inoculated plants completely bend and the inoculated plant uh, is still uh, 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 keep uh, uh, stand up. And what, let's see what happened with the other hybrids. You see here that for this hybrid, even the inoculated start also to bend. But the other, the other uh, uh, hybrids is still uh, uh, up. Okay. You see here that for this Syngenta hybrid, the two non-inoculated plants bend. The non-inoculate, the inoculated plant start bending, but still uh, keep, uh, 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 let's say, uh, tolerate this the drug cells. But what is very important is here. You see this hybrid from Monsanto, the non-inoculated plant is almost completely bent, but the inoculated plant did not bend at all. They stay, uh, they stand up during the entire draw treatment. This is a severe draw treatment. But let's see what happened after rehydration. Okay, so now plants are rehydrated and you see here, for this Syngenta hybrid, the two inoculated plants recovered very quickly. Uh, and the, the, the non-inoculated plants is still bent. You see here that the same thing happens for the Pioneer hybrid. The inoculated plant recover and the non-inoculated plants delay a lot to recover after hydration. You see here, right? Look this plant here. It takes long, 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 long to recover, but it recover. Okay, so, but what is important here is, is that for this hybrid from Monsanto, the non-inoculate plant did not recover after rehydration. What does it mean? This means that somehow the synthetic microbial community changes the plant behavior, changes the plant turgor, the cell turgor, so that in this case for the, uh, for the Monsanto hybrid, the inoculated plant are highly tolerant to uh, draw stress. And, uh, and, and, and the, uh, the, the non-inoculated plant is very sensitive to draw stress. And then this community, uh, uh, microbial communities, uh, let's say confer a, a, a very high uh, 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 drought tolerance uh, behavior to these plants, okay? So, and this is uh, uh, what we, we, we see at, uh, at the end of the experiment. And again, this is very, very, very important 
because sometimes uh, when you collect data one or two or three or four times during a day, you cannot see this kind of behavior of the plane. And, but measuring, you know, uh, imaging the plants along the entire day and the entire experiment for different, for, for the entire uh, drought uh, uh, treatment, you can collect data on the behavior of the plant. And the same coin also, uh, we, we, we extract data that uh, indicate that this sink coin inoculation optimize leaf temperature. You see here, uh, again, uh, with the sensor that was attached to the plant, we monitor it during long, long, long period. And these are plants that in a, in a well watered uh, condition, uh, this, uh, 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 this is the Monsanto hybrid. And what we detect here is that when during a single day, when the temperature goes up, the air temperature goes up, the inoculated plants in the blue line are able, uh, the, the microbial, the synthetic community are able to decrease the leaf temperature to about over, uh, 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 to about four, four degrees, the difference in temperature uh, up to four, three to four degrees, uh, uh, decrease temperature, uh, reduce temperature at uh, the peak of the, uh, the, the environmental temperature, the air temperature. And you see here, day after day, after day, after day, the same behavior. So the inoculated plant, the, the single inoculation, op optimize leaf temperature when you have a situation of well water condition. When you measure this difference along the entire period, for example, from day 70 to 115 days, you can see here in, in this, those uh, red peaks here, show the, um, the difference in the leaf temperature of the inoculated to the non-inoculated plant. And you see a huge uh, cumulative uh, temperature difference. And this, uh, of course, uh, you can imagine that his, uh, uh, the, the, this uh, uh, difference in temperature can have a big impact on plant physiology, photosynthesis, and so on and so forth. And this is, again, this is, uh, uh, you can have this kind of data only if you measure uh, with this uh, uh, setup uh, what, that we call it uh, 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 real-time setup. So taking a measurement every five minutes in this case. But what's, what's important here is that different maize hybrids from different companies respond differently to sink on inoculation in terms of leaf temperature. You see here the decal plant, the, decal pl the, the, the Monsanto plant. The Monsanto plant is that one that uh, did not bend at all uh, when uh, submit to draw stress. You see here that this plant, if you, if you take the data from day 57 to 115, you see the total uh, difference uh, between inoculated and non-inoculated. This is uh, the, what, what you call this uh, 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 comparative uh, uh, leaf temperature difference uh, between inoculated and non-inoculated. It's huge. It's 1,328 against 31. So it's huge at the difference, but this is not exactly the same for the, for the different hybrids. For example, the Syngenta hybrid, you have Sometimes you know there's no significant difference. While for Pioneer Hybrid, you have a, a small difference uh, in uh, leaf temperature. What does this mean? This means that there is a uh, there is an interaction between microbial communities and plant genotype. Some some genotypes, of course, may respond better than others. And this is very important information because in terms of breeding and, and uh, you can uh, perhaps uh, uh, select for the plants that respond to, uh, to uh, 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 microbial inoculation uh, that will give you much more uh, um, information, much more uh, better, better uh, let's say, uh, corn um, hybrids for, uh, uh, for the farmers. 
if you uh, if you are going to use a more sustainable uh, monitoring system like uh, inoculation with microbes. So what happens with the water uh, uh, water uh, uh, measurement of water flow uh, or sap flow, what we call uh, in these different uh, materials? What we show here is that Syncon optimize water uh, flux during plant hydration. This is a small window um, of uh, uh, around uh, 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 seven days on uh, plants that were uh, well watered and droughts, submit to drought stress. Uh, in red, you have non inoculated, and in blue, they inoculated with Syncon. You see here. The sap flow in terms of grams of water per, per hour, you see here that under uh, well uh, in uh, water uh, conditions, the inoculated plant, uh, 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 the flux, the water flux in the inoculated plant is higher compared to the non inoculated plant. This is why they, uh, they are able to keep the temperature three to four degrees lower than the non-inoculated. And, but you see here that for this uh, Pioneer hybrid, uh, it seems a little bit different. So uh, the, uh, the water flow is higher on in non-inoculated uh, as compared with inoculated. These explain why they are, were not able to, to, to control the temperature, to, to, to decrease the temperature in the, in the, in the plant. So, this data show that the, the, the temperature, the, the, the leaf temperature is controlled by the water, uh, water flow uh, behavior uh, of the plants. And this is uh, improved when uh, you inoculate it with the syncone. And again, here you see uh, under draw, you have a little bit different, uh, different here. So in red, it's non inoculated, and in blue, it's inoculated. Blue is, is is uh, the the water uh, uh, flow is decreased uh, in the in this uh, Monsanto hybrid? That means that this may explain why they um, uh, kept you know uh, up and when uh, uh, it changed a little bit when the uh, plants were uh, rewatered and, and you see here a big difference in the recovery of this uh, um, pioneer hybrid. You saw in the movie in the snapshot that. Uh, the Pioneer Hybrid was the first to recover after the draw stress. And you see here that uh, the water flow in the, during recovery is much faster, it's higher in this hybrid than compared to the uh, non-inoculated plant. So this, this can explain why the, 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 the plant recovers so fast uh, when uh, 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 rewatered. Right. So, shifting water flux rate in plant uh, is optimized by uh, by the the the, the uh, uh, inoculation. So, this is what we we can show. These are, of course, it's very uh, uh, little uh, uh, data that we are present. There are much much more information that was collected in this data set. And uh, uh, you can see this, all the data uh, is, uh, was uh, recently published uh, last month in, uh, in Frontiers in Microbiology. And uh, all the data is, is there. There's a lot of also um, as, as data as uh, supplement material. And this, this publication uh, is called Modulation of Drug Stress Response of Maize Biosyntech Bacterial Community. And that was uh, uh, authored by Jader, Rafael, Barbara, Juliana, that made uh, a fantastic contribution for the understanding of the impact of uh, microbial communities. In this picture, you see here uh, members of our, uh, uh, our uh, research group. Uh, in red here is uh, Jader, that is the molecular biologist that uh, uh, changed uh, uh, at some time to uh, 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 electronic and computer engineering. And Barbara, and that was uh, one of the uh, 
contributor for the paper, and Juliana, uh, responsible for the statistical analysis, and Rafael, that lead uh, the my microbial uh, group in our research team. So with this, I end here and uh, I can uh, uh, get questions if I uh, wish. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Aruda, for this uh, very nice, uh, extensive and comprehensive study where your team combined different aspects of uh, not only, but uh, also of plant phenotyping, uh, physiological aspects and image-based aspects and uh, showed uh, nicely the power that you gain uh, to when, when you combine um, those, those different levels of um, observation. This nicely highlights um, that these combined measurements are vital for the understanding of plant responses to environmental conditions and stresses, as you have nicely shown. Thank you very much. Thank you. So uh, we are opening uh, our discussion. So the chat uh, or the, the audience is asked to um, send in questions continuously via the chat and I will ask them out loud. And I have already collected some questions here, which I will, whenever you're ready, just uh, speak out loud. Okay, okay, oh. go ahead. Okay, so first, uh, Questions. Your experimental setup was placed in a mesh house with open side walls, as I saw. For determining VPD, you choose to use the Arden Book equation. In this equa equation, including uh, is this uh, equation including wind as an important factor for VPD? Well, thank you very much for this nice uh, uh, question. Um, it, it's uh, the, the, the experiment was in uh, in a very well controlled environment, so it's not open. Indeed, uh, there are some, but not strong effect of wind. Okay. So, and if you see the setup at the show in the experiment, and you have the plants, uh, we, 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 the experiment was uh, conducted for 500 and something plants, and we monitored 70 plants uh, distributed in a statistic, uh, in an in experimental design so that you can avoid the effect of the plants that are at the, the, at the lateral uh, part of the greenhouse so that you can measure also plants that are in the middle. And uh, so the effect of the wind, the, the wind in this case was, uh, was marginal. So uh, we didn't consider uh, this, uh, this aspect in this experiment. Okay. <clears throat> um, okay, thank you very much. Next question. Would you say that since the genetic background of the plant, uh, obviously played a major role governing their potential beneficial uh, effects of uh, the microbiota, um, that this response could be a breeding target some days in the future? Yes, thank you very much for the nice question. Yes, this is exactly what we think. If you, if you think uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in the breeding program, let's say corn breeding, okay? And, uh, and most of the, 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 the big art biotech companies, they breed corn uh, all over the world uh, in terms of the uh, performance, yield performance. And, and yield performance is uh, based on, uh, let's say, agricultural management, such as uh, high nutrient input, high uh, fertilizers, uh, 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 putting a lot of fertilizer, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, and, and they select during breeding process, they select plants that are able to respond to higher, high amount of fertilizers. Mm -hmm. High amount of fertilizers perhaps does not need the, the help of microbes. Although, although microbes should be there, but they are not needed because the nutrients are there. Mm -hmm. 
And of course, the, the breeding program, they select uh, genotypes for the different environments all over the world. Even in a single country, in, even in a single farm, depending on the size of the farm, you have different genotypes that perform better in, di in different micro environment and so and so. And of course, you need to think that this, the, this uh, 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 different genotypes, different corn genotype that was selected, was selected based on physiological uh, aspects. Of, biochemistry, photosynthesis, and so on and so on. And also perhaps exudation of photosynthetase that helps microbes to colonize the plant. This is what we think. So we, if we are going to use, let's say, uh, microbes from the plant microbiome as a source for uh, sustainable uh, agriculture management in terms of uh, nutrient acquisition, uh, environmental stress, such drought, drought stress, high temperature stress, we need to have the microbes in the breeding program, during the breeding program, so that perhaps we can select much better material that have high efficiency in, let's say, uh, 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 in, 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 in uh, respond to, to microbe inoculation. Much more nowadays, what people do, people select, you know, are isolating microbes and trying to use microbes uh, uh, for different uh, plant genotypes and so and so. But our idea is that from our data, we think that this should be better if the breeding program goes together with the, the microbes so that you can, at the end of the selection, you can have really good materials for responding to uh environmental stress this is what we think mm. for your study you used um sugarcane core microbiome as a source material for your yes. artificial communities so um sugarcane and and maize are genetically not too unfamiliar let's say it like this yeah so um yeah yeah so but uh, uh okay sugarcane is uh, is a little a close related to corn, like sorghum, yes. uh, also, and uh, and uh, what we 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 saw here is that uh, uh, this the idea here is to isolate the the sugarcane microbiome is that we try to isolate the wild uh, from the wild environment. So we selected we 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 grew these plants, uh, sugarcane plants in in soil that has never been uh, fertilized with any kind of fertilizer so that maybe they were able to select native microbes that were there and uh, sugar cane you 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 can you harvest by cutting and regrow cutting regrow so and we we analyze this uh, and isolate the microbes after the fourth cutting and uh, and uh, and this i think that were we we luckily we uh, we uh, uh, identify and isolate, uh, let's say, uh, wild um, microbes coming from wild soil, so that soil, that naive soil we call, so that uh, maybe um, microbes that has not faced you know, the agriculture uh, treatment with herbicides or, or, or pesticides that really can change in the microbial community. People use mm -hmm. to select the microbial community from the field, uh, the production field. But the production field has been treated with, uh, let's say, chemicals for decades. It's no longer the, the let's say, the, the natural, let's say, uh, microbial communities. And that is, uh, so this is the idea. Mm -hmm. Yes, as um, <clears throat> I remember also studies from India sampling from from very pristine uh, ecosystems, plants that were that were capable to endure um, drought drought uh, conditions very well um, to have donated their their microbiome, and uh, this then uh, has been experimentally tested to also exert a similar uh, similar uh, beneficial. Um, 
uh, reactions in in other crops. Um, yeah. Ever since since this microbiome seems to be quite um, fluctuating in in uh, respect to their origin, their their um, their um, yeah place of of where they have been exerted to to different kinds of environmental conditions have you observed uh, similar fluctuations in the comp composition of core microbiomes depending on the site you you have sampled them what, what we, 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 we we have done is, is that uh, we have uh, conducted some few trials uh, mm -hmm. in uh, uh, we have seen that in different places, and we have seen that, uh, uh, yes, uh, this synthetic microbial community are able to induce not only uh, uh, abiotic stress, such as drought, but also biotic stress, so respond uh, against uh, uh, disease. Uh, uh, and, and this is an, another very interesting thing. So, but we are concentrating now the analysis of microbiome from native plants uh, growing in uh, arid soils, soils with very, very, very poor nutrient condition, very poor uh, phosphorus concentration, very poor nitrogen concentrations, and very drought environments. And, and interesting, there is a place in Brazil where we have uh, uh, this con these conditions is one of the poorest phosphorus uh, soil in the world uh, with uh, weather uh, without raining every uh, up, to, up to six months. Uh, but interestingly, it's a hot, hot spot of plant biodiversity. <laughs> Plants are very happy to grow there. Very, very happy. And then we ask it, are there microbes helping those plants to be so happy in this so nasty environment? And the question, yes, uh, we have mapped it, a very uh, a wide uh, uh, sample of this, uh, 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 the, 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 this area, and we collected really fantastic data on microbial communities that helps plants to acquire phosphorus, nitrogen, and also to fix CO2. We have mm. identified bacteria fixing CO2. Not the only, there are new ones, that have acquired the capacity to fix CO2 in those plants. So yes, uh, this is what we are doing. Uh, we believe that na native or pristine environments are a rich source of microbe uh, that uh, can be explored by uh, the by the by the agriculture. But what uh, uh, so this is a phenotyping. Uh, webinar. So uh, I just want to say that uh, this setup that we 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 start uh, we 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 made this in a, in a in a greenhouse. It, it can be used also in field trials uh, because uh, uh, you can you can protect the sensors in the field and then, and and then uh, we can you you can, you can place you know uh, uh, stations uh, for transmitting the data. Uh, through the internet so that you can collect data in the field. And then you can have real uh, data on behavior of plants. Because when you say environmental stress or, or imposed by climate change, well, we are thinking in, let's say, in, the, in a, a, um, let's say, a strong change. But change happens every day. Gradually, yeah. yeah. Every day. So you have, at the morning, you have low temperature, middle of the day, high temperature, and then you can have increased uh, 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 light uh, uh, radiation, and you can have uh, clouds. And that. so stress is, is there all the time. We think that microbes help plants to keep homeostasis, so that respond to daily changes in the environment and uh, and keep plant producing uh, have uh, uh, keeping the plant homeostasis so that this will imply in an increased yield this is what we think now yes so um <clears throat> the next questions um 
comes from the audience. Uh, congratulations on your presentation. The issue of plant phenotyping is essential to the work being carried out. So I would like to ask about the number of samples. In this way, the investigations of the roots can be helpful in the drought tolerance experiment in the laboratory and in the field? Question mark. Yeah. Well, you need to, well, the number of, of, uh, uh, of uh, samples, the number of plants that you can monitor, it depends on the, how much you have to invest. If, if you have, because this is a very, uh, very cheap uh, 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 platform. So this platform, the entire platform costs less than $5,000 less than $5,000. So uh, if you have a little bit more, you can increase the number of uh, plants to be monitored. You, you, you can put this in the field also if you want. It depends on the, on the, on the, on the, on the investment you have. You know? And uh, you need to plan uh, to the, 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 the experimental design so that you can have data in a plot, for example, uh, statistically significant uh, data from a plot with not too much, let's say, plants being monitored. Uh, and you can you can use you can you can measure, of course, uh, the soil, the moisture in soil. And uh, I don't know if uh, with this setup that we made, I don't know if we can uh, do too much in terms of roots. Mm. Would you say that maybe imaging um, techniques could replace um, most or all of the of the sensors who have been uh, and, and provide you with the data um, used in your current setup, for example, using a multispectral camera uh, mounted on a drone uh, explicitly now for 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 putting or converting your your work into the field? Yes. Yeah. Yes, we have been discussing this uh, uh, topic uh, uh, with uh, uh, colleagues, uh, and uh, and uh, we we have been analyzing some data collected with drones equipped with this hyperspectrum system. But again, it's very interesting because if you have a plot in the field, you 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 need uh, the drone, you know, uh, uh, flying, you know, the entire experiment. And uh, for example, if you are if you are in a in a in a plant here in a in a time that is too too much different from the the first one here, you have difference, all right? So the the problem is data point, the representation of the data point at the same time. Mm -hmm. So the difference, if you want to measure small difference, yeah, it, it's you know. Of course, I, I'm talking with our experiments, uh, experiences that uh, if you wanted to, to, to pay color, you say, to detect a small difference, you need to monitor plant by plant so that you can have the same data at the same second, right? Uh, in that particular area. Uh, for example, if you see that big uh, greenhouse system with trays conducting a plant to an imager. Yeah. So take hours to measure every plant. And hours means that changes in temperature in the environment and light and everything. So we are measuring in different conditions so that you mm -hmm. cannot detect small difference. So you need a very accurate system with a very, very high turnover um, or throughput. So to say, yes. you have a very, very uh, small time uh, difference between uh, one and the other. Uh, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And I should say that this must be done in, let's say, take the data from Oakland in a window of, uh, let's say, a few minutes. Few minutes? Yeah, <laughs> a few minutes. Because uh, it depends on the while you have because you can you can change you know uh, 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 you can change the the, the, the light radiation quickly. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, and the angle. And when when you put moves. this in a statistical model, it's going to be not significant. Mm -hmm. But it's not because it's not significant. It's because the the, the data was collected in different environments. Yeah. yeah. Okay, um, next question from the audience. The environment of microbiomes is a crucial issue. 
is it possible to compare at all the difference in microbiome communities in different soil types, e.g. Uh, temperate soil and tropical soil, for example? I don't think that there are too much data on comparing, let's say, uh, microbes uh, or select or inoculums or selected in from tropical areas in temperate areas or vice versa. It's, uh, there are not too much data in this case. But what I can say is that here in our country, in Brazil, uh, where we, we, we cultivate corn and soybean from the south to the north, and it's really completely different environment. And uh, in terms of temperature, in terms of uh, water availability, in terms of soil, different type of soil. Uh, I should say that, uh, yes, it's possible, uh, let's say, to select microbes that, um, you know, uh, help plants to, to, to perform better. The most important example are the nitrogen-fixing bacteria rhizobium for soybean. Here in this country right now, 80% of soybean is grown without chemical nitrogen fertilization. All the nitrogen is provided by brother rhizobium. And this is true from the south to the north. Mm -hmm. But rhizobium is a little bit different because rhizobium can colonize and and, and, and change the root structure in producing nodules, where the nodules are, are, are let's say, uh, a very, uh, 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 let's say, well-adapted structure, you know, to cap uh, bacteria. But it's an example. It's a very interesting example. Well, and, there uh, are... Oh, yeah. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead. No, they, are, they are reported uh, to be Pseudomonas bacteria also um, having a role in, in nitrogen uh, fixation. And, and this, of course, could, could um, display a kind of ecotype or a more, more commonly or even more abundant um, um, genus for, for this uh, specific function. So in this sense, it would be interesting to uh, maybe investigate in a in a future study and maybe by a different team, but more on the biogeography of these pseudomonas as the the genus is quite widely spread. Yes, yes, yes. That's true. That's true. Uh, there are some examples right now showing that uh, you can you can just uh, 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 release, let's say, the nitrogen capacity, fixation capacity of pseudomonas so that it can help corn uh, to take um, uh, 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 nitrogen from the air. So it's true. Uh, in our experience, experience, we see that one of the most important, let's say, trait or characteristics of uh, microbial to be used as inoculant is the colonization capacity mm -hmm. because you can have a very good bacteria but if they not colonize robustly colonize because it's a, it's, it's a in terms of a, a number of bacteria that are able you know <laughs> to colonize it's, it's a number of yeah. so this is why in our team what we we look is for the robust colonizers doesn't matter mm -hmm. if it's Pseudomonas or other other species. Of course, there are some pseudomonas that are really very good uh, uh, colonizer. But we need to think that because it's it's a kind of uh, a, a naive thinking. But if a bacteria colonizes plant robustly, it's because um, you know plants is doing well with this <laughs> this bacteria. Right. Yeah. Uh, at least as long as the plant still still strives and lives. Yes, that, exactly, exactly. But we, you you see that in 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 the wild wild environment, uh, colonization has been a kind of uh, let's say co-evoluted with the plant. 
So that, you know, because plants are there for millions of years. And, and they maybe select the ones that are robust colonizer and benefit plant growth, development, the nutrient acquisition, uh, response to environment and response to disease. Yeah. Otherwise, it will kill it. <laughs> so in this way, it makes total sense to to when you select a, a, a certain certain uh, bacterial uh, community to go to the to the original sites where plants can be found um, that that endure the the environmental condition which you are targeting for, and then sample these core communities and try them in in different environmental conditions of in different plants better in the yeah, in different crops, conditions yeah. in different plants and see if there are maybe also um the same uh they are having the same effect there so it makes yeah, sense yeah, exactly. because it's a co-evolutionary as or a co-evolutionary thing um yeah yeah, Professor Aruda, this is a very complex topic, and uh, as a as a former ecologist, I have to say, um, when when ten or fifteen years ago, uh, people were telling me that that uh, that uh, microbes um, help plants um, in to endure water or, or drought stress better, I would have said possibly not, because they are also competing against each other, and I wouldn't have guess that uh, that they play such a major role in stress uh, response so uh, this is um, for me totally fascinating um, fascinating topic and i could go on for hours and hours talking with you about this however we need to to find an end here okay to our discussion thank you very much um Professor Aroda, where can we see you in the future? Or what are your plans in the future? Yes, yeah, so um, um, I'll, I'll, be, uh, I'll be next year in, in, in June, I'll be in Brussels, uh, because uh, we are part of the uh, big uh, microbiome community that is supported by European community through the Horizon 2020 um, program. We have a, 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 a project, a network that is support. The network is called uh, Microbiome Support. And uh, there will be a meeting on, uh, on June in Brussels, uh, and I, I'll be there. This is going to be in June. It's not the final well, exactly the date. Uh, I think 21 to 20 or 20, 22 to 27 or something like that of June next mm -hmm. year. This is, this is my plan for uh, going to uh, scientific events and I'll be there. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Just a, a short hint for you in uh, September, late September next year, the IPPS um, will be happening, the International Plant Phenotyping Symposium, and we will have also a session on microbiome risk. Oh, yes. And, and, uh, good. So, so um, <clears throat> have a, a look out for, for this as well. Um, I, it would be a pleasure to welcome you uh, then uh, a couple of months later again, almost at the same place here in Europe. Um, so, um, yes, excellent, Professor. Okay. For your time. Uh, thank you for uh, the study that you have conducted and uh, the discussion that that we had here today. Um, this was our last phenomics webinars for this year. We will take a break um, from December on until uh, end of January. Uh, be sure to um, submit our abstract and title in case you want to also be a speaker in the phenomics webinars. And um, yeah, if we don't see each other, I wish you all uh, happy holidays and a good uh, ride into 2022. Once again, Professor Aruda, a big uh, shout out to you and your team for this uh, extensive study. And uh, we'll hope to hear more from you in the future. Good luck with that. Thank you. Thank you very much, Felipe, and, uh, and uh, for the opportunity to speak in this uh, uh, network. And hopefully we're going to meet uh, somewhere next year. Hopefully. Thank you. Thank bye you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, you all. Thank you. Thank you.